So good evening everyone and thanks for the introduction Steve. So my name is Frank Mobus, I'm here on behalf of the Australian Institute of Waterproofing. So the Australian Institute of Waterproofing is a national organisation, member based, and basically our job is to uh, help builders and waterproofers improve the waterproofing standard around Australia. So this evening's presentation is on preventing waterproofing defects. I'm going to focus specifically on external waterproofing. So as Steve said, waterproofing membranes externally, um, decks, waterproof, uh, balconies, rooftops, is historically one of the top 10 defects reported to the QBCC. Generally, uh, one third of all waterproofing defects are related to external waterproofing. And of course, rectification, uh, including rectification of uh, consequential damage, can incur significant costs. So here's an example. Uh, Nautilus Apartments in Auckland, New Zealand. That's the building. It's a 12-level mixed-use building with 150 apartments. Completed in 2004 at a cost of around about $35 million. We estimated that the waterproofing contract for that job was probably in the order of $500,000. Remediation costs are $22 million for that building all related to waterproofing defects. So that includes all the uh, consequential damage and everything as well. And in this particular case, the liability ended up with the building surveyor. Because builder was broke, waterproofer was broke, tiler was broke, last person standing, building surveyor, which in this case was the city council. So they're currently coughing up 22 million bucks to fix this building up. So let's talk about what happens in Australia and as you know we work in accordance with the National Construction Code. And you'll see there that I've got the picture of the 2016 version up and if you didn't know uh, the NCC is now has a life of three years. So the 26, 2016 version is valid till 2019 and then it's due for review. So the performance requirements for external waterproofing are the same for volumes one and two. And I've just picked the bits out that are directly related to waterproofing. So surface water resulting from a storm having an average recurrence interval of 100 years must not enter the building. And the other one is a roof and external wall, including openings around windows and doors, must prevent the penetration of water that could cause unhealthy or dangerous conditions or undue dampness or deterioration of building elements. So a couple of important bits in that clause is firstly what it says, it says including openings around windows and doors. So it's not just the window and the door that has to be waterproof, it has to be the opening as well. So the reveals. Right? The, the other thing the important is what it doesn't say. So in this section it doesn't say anything about a hundred year storm. Right? So basically it means all the time. That makes sense? So the deemed to satisfy provision, also the same for both volume one and two, very simple. Waterproofing membranes for external above ground use must comply with A's 4654 part one and part two. Part one is about materials. So that's the standard that waterproofing manufacturers use and have to comply with. So your membrane must do this, this and this in order to comply with that, uh, to be used as an external above ground membrane. The important part for you guys is part two, which is design and installation. And we're going to spend the majority of the evening talking about part two of that standard. <laughs>